You better back the fuck up out my face, goddammit. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Don't play with me. Welcome to the Detroit Lions Podcast. This is episode 527, the Detroit Lions 2024 yeah. Draft Countdown. We are rocking and rolling this official Detroit Lions Podcast for Reddit. I am your dashing host, Chris, and with me is my good friend and co-host, Jeff the Riz. Risden, how you doing, big brother? I am ready for the draft. We are, what, six days and counting? Six I, uh, days away. Can't I can't wait to sleep again, Chris? It's gonna be gonna be glorious when that happens. Yeah, it's gonna be a fan, fan, fantastic time. Uh, sleep is. I, I think my sleep app says I've got three and a half hours in the last twenty four hours. Uh, it's 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 a fleeting beast, but we'll get there. I, I it promise. is. We'll get there. It, it it's fun being punch drunk all day without ever drinking alcohol. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of fun. But don't worry, I did bring alcohol along. Um, yeah, so the draft hey! is coming. <laughs> we'll have our draft show as we usually do. We couldn't do the party. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I won't get into it. Um, we'll, we will have our online draft party, so you can join us for that. We'll have a lot of fun. We've got Ash on day one. Uh, we'll talk about day two as we get closer to that. Uh, but it is going to be a grand, grand time. You guys are going to love it. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. We're going to start out with our warm-ups as we start to gather and everyone joins the show. We're going to do our player injury report because there's a new player injury to report. And, of course, we'll talk about uniforms. This is one. Look, we're not going to spend an hour talking about it. It's a big thing that came out yesterday, fanatics at DetroitLionsPodcast.com. But we will talk about them a little bit because there's a little controversy about them out there. We want to, you know, just address it because it's there. Uh, We are going to talk about Brad Holmes' presser. And uh, you heard him at the beginning of the show here. We'll talk about that. And we'll also have our closing thoughts and ideas about the 2024 NFL draft. How's that, brother? I'm good? It's it's deep thoughts, man. I like it. (laughs) It's definitely deep. It's deep. Deep. We got a great show lined up. Deep show lined up. Riz, you ready to go deep? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's kick this off and break it down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man so I, I, i'll give people a little behind the scenes thing i'm writing my what i would do mock draft um and i i interrupted it to do this and uh, i'm at a sticking point i'm at number 23 and i don't know where to go with it so uh, i might crowdsource Ooh. that as we move along with this too crowdsource it all right that sounds fun yeah use it in the chat 23 who do you think you know who do you think should uh who who's who's at twenty three? I can't wait for the the scroll to come by and remind me who's who are we looking at. It is the Minnesota Vikings, and I forbid Ooh. myself from making trades. So this is their second pick, and with yes, their first right. one, they got JJ McCarthy. Okay, folks, they got JJ McCarthy. McCarthy, <laughs> I just say that McCarthy. really. JJ McCarthy. Uh, what are they going to get at twenty three? Just throw it up in the in the in this in the comments yeah. in the, the chat here. We'll we'll help crowdsource this a little bit for Riz. We'll help him do the writing stuff because it could be hard. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> let's uh, let's do our warm-ups as we gather. Um, yeah. A little heartwarming story here from our, our man, Jared Goff, the man that I stood behind from the beginning. Uh, I want to – I won't let that one die. Uh, when you're right, you just got to hang on to it, Riz. You got to hang on to him when you're right. <laughs> Nobody ever lets me be right, said. Oh, God, Riz. I got it. Here you go. A little, hey. a little love for you. Of course, it is no name the James Houston Memorial, but whatever. <laughs> so Jared Goff. Jared Some Goff. pages to be written there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Jared Goff says, much like he was cast away by others, Detroit was cast away by others, and he feels a oneness with the city and has called the city his home. And that's one of the things I, I saw kind of forming and one of the things th- those kind of bonds i could see about jared fitting into the city and to the culture of the city and the lions team as a whole and I-, I love how dan campbell's embraced it from from the very beginning right and the-, the whole grit culture and and what what the team is and what and-, and kind of their foundation because it really does embody the heart of 
the city of Detroit. It's a city that's been kicked and been down. Like when the rest of the country was 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 heading up, Detroit just couldn't just couldn't get a yeah, break, man. It, it was there. no. Yeah. But I will tell you, my Detroiters, my lovers in Detroit, I travel around a lot, and that's one of the reasons why we've had fewer shows this draft season. There is no city on the rise like Detroit right now. Everybody is diving into the powdered dung hole, and uh, Detroit is is a star on the rise. I just want if you don't travel, you don't get around and see it. I'm just telling you right now, it is the place to be. Detroit is hot and beautiful and going in the right direction. And it, it, you talk about a mirror, the Lions, the t- Jared Goff, the city all together, man. The the wings are so close. It's just a sense of pride. Oh. The, even the Tigers this year are starting off a little a little warm, right? I the mean, wings had more wins. They yeah. had more wins. I know. How does that I'm, oh. No goal. It was I'm, not no e- goal. I'm not even a Wings fan, and that bothers me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I miss hockey. Right. I got to spend some time with that now. But anyway, Detroit is on the rise. Jared Goff feels that that same love, and and you can see it. Jared was cast aside, even by a lot of Detroiters. He's a bridge quarterback. He's a bridge quarterback. But the the city, the people have embraced him. We've heard it all over the place. <laughs> I, they, I guarantee the chance will break out next Thursday night when Roger Goodell is up on stage oh, God, uh, yes. in Detroit for the draft. Absolutely. absolutely, freaking lugly And he deserves it. I, 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 I think he deserves it. He's, he's in the face of doubting fans here and doubting fans across the country. He's stood up. He's helped architect with Ben Johnson and with Dan Campbell. One hell of an offense in Detroit that took us to the NFC championship game. Could have won that game. Things did go wrong, Oof. and I, I sincerely believe that's there. a team that very well could have won the Super Bowl had they been, especially the way the, the Chiefs played. That's a, that, that's a Detroit Lions team, which makes that the NFC Championship game hurt just a little more, but I, I choose to celebrate this team being where they are right now and having not been there in a lifetime, effectively. They so. went a couple of rungs higher on the ladder than most people expected. Yeah. In winning multiple playoff games for the first time in Super Bowl history, that Super Bowl era history. Yep. That's uh, that's special. And they're there because of so many reasons, but Jared Goff is paramount among those. And, you know, you, you talked about um, the city embracing Detroit. I really do think that Dan Campbell playing here and playing here when he played here, yeah. like, yeah. I think that helps him understand a little bit more. And want it that much more. Like, you don't get that if you're, you know, like the Vikings, like Kevin O'Connell. He doesn't know. He doesn't know their history. He doesn't know their frustration. He doesn't know much before Kirk Cousins. Like, he's not very old. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, and that, that's that. That is something that's special. It does connect Dan to the city beyond, above and beyond just how awesome he is. It's the fact that, and. He was an, he was a largely inconsequential player, and he will tell you that. But he, he knows it. He understands it. He gets that. And I, yep. I, I don't think we it. stress. I don't think we stress that enough. Quite frankly, um, the fact that he went to Sheila and, and like let off with like, I want this job. Yeah, like he fought like, for it. He came in. Yeah, and, he did. And, he really I mean, did. Think about the passion he showed as a coach and getting to know him. And and besides the the silly quotes, just. Those are what they are. Put them aside for a moment. But just think about what he did in that interview room and how passionate he came. And you saw him when he was talking about it. You could tell there was just almost a tear in his eye when he was talking about how bad he wanted that job and he wanted to be here. Because Dan, having been here, recognizes what it means to the city, what it means to be. And it's it's not about him to be the person, but it is also about him to have been the person to turn this around and get it right. That's just such a vote for, I was right. It's just like such a feather in your hat that you know you had it and you were you could do it and and you're the right guy for the job. There, there's it, 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 Grit comes out of that, out of that yeah. desire and that confidence. And Dan Campbell embodies that, as, as we all know. So good stuff. Love Jared Goff just embracing the city this way and, and finding himself. I mean, 
sure it helps it helps with dan campbell and it helps with the organization and it helps with the chance of jared goff but he's found his way here too you know what i mean and he's had mm-hmm. i think a heartfelt journey we talk about Kristen harper's it's always been detroit right that that whole thing that journey that he's gone through there's there's something there's a real attachment so love it i love what we have here i'm i'm looking forward to the contract I really am. I'm looking forward to the Jared Goff contract because somebody somewhere is guaranteed to tell you we paid too much. I'm telling you right now. But I don't think it's going to be a bad deal. I don't think it's going to be a bad deal. So uh, don't let the naysayer, the inevitable naysayer, sayers. Well, I mean, with, with the way that they tack void years on everything, it'll it'll be palatable um, mm-hmm. for now. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, and it's yeah. just uh, remember that the minimum that he should take should take is what his cap figure is this year plus the the franchise tag figure for next year which puts it up in the 86 million range over two years it's 43 million that should be the absolute basement of what he would consider signing should be yep don't know if that's true or not but he it it should be yep um otherwise he's selling himself short and and and, and even i don't i don't think he will either but you know, they, they talk about, oh, agents, and they don't like it, and the NFLPA doesn't like it when people sign friendly contracts. No, they don't. And, but, they but they truly what? don't. But agents don't like it when they go for the guarantee either, and they don't like it when they do a lot of things, but players are now fighting for players, and agents aren't aren't getting as much leeway to fight for agents first and players second. So uh, we'll yeah. see what happens. You know what else agents don't like, Chris? They don't like it when their clients leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's very, very true. <laughs> So that's where we are. Um, li- really quick, Detroit fan man, I want to hear a Jared Goff chant dominating the broadcast when Caleb gets picked at number one, hundred percent. I, if if that's that that's would be fantastic, please. If you're going to be at the draft, chant Jared Goff, top of your lungs. You're you're there. There's look. It's up front. It's going to be. It's going to be the the crack mans and those kind of people, right? The fan of the year folks. That's that's who's going to be up front, right? The lalas and that kind of thing. But the crowd, kind of the the, the back seats that paid a lot of money, those folks, those are the ones you're going to hear. Chant it. Let's hear Jared Goff, top of the top of the shelf, top of the lungs. Let's let's make that a reality. I would love that. That would be awesome. Um, also, as Donkey many, Kong. As, uh, go ahead. Sorry. You know, as many Detroit people as you can get in there, because uh, in in the past when I have gone to the traveling road show that is the NFL draft. There is less local representation than you might think as a total percentage of the audience. Yeah, um, the first that. couple that were in Chicago that I went to, they were maybe maybe 50% Chicago fans. Like, fans travel for this. And, but, like, that's, that's sort of the allure of it is that you don't necessarily get the locals, like, up front and prominent. Um, every draft I've been to, going back to when I went to the ones at Radio City Music Hall, I went to a couple there. Been to the ones in Chicago, been to the one in Cleveland. Every one of them has a massive throng of the, like the same Seattle Seahawks fans. There's like mm-hmm. 500 of them, and they travel en masse every year. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of teams fans that do that. Um, just, so don't be don't be taken aback if you're downtown and you see that it's not like, oh, where are all these Bears? Where's where's all the, why are all these Browns fans here? They don't even pick. Why are these Steelers people here? Why are there? Why is that Colts guy wearing a suit over there with his beard dyed, dyed blue? Like. That's part of every draft. Like that's, To be fair, that's, though, that's what in, it is. In Chicago, it wasn't an election year, so they weren't picking a quarterback that year. Had it been an election year, they'd be picking a quarterback, and then those guys would have shown up. <laughs> that, was, that was 15 every, and 16. I don't even remember who they were. Every picked. election year, every four years, another quarterback uh, for Chicago. Well, they're, they're taking Caleb Williams <laughs> this year. So, yep. God bless them. Yep. Bless Donkey their Kong. hearts. Donkey Kong. If, we're, if he's he isn't here yet, I will on his behalf say Super Bowl or bust, because that's how he always opens the show for us. Riley, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate you. Um, another one I want to talk about really quick. Oh, yeah. Um, when he cried walking to Ford Field, Jordy says, I knew Dan Campbell was yeah. was the guy. 100%, man. 100%. So we've got ourselves some some Jared Goff. That's great. Loving that. We also have a new addition to the offensive line. In one baby Sewell. Congratulations to the Sewell family. Panay and his beautiful bride have yeah. another young child, a daughter, added to the to the pride. I that love, man is going to have himself a whole lot of kids. Smiles, man. I, I know he's going to have <laughs> a lot of kids. I can tell. He's going to be father of the pride. <laughs> That's so cool. It's 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 always great when they can time it 
not that they tried to time it. I don't know that, but like if you can time it to get your your birth like now, that's golden, man. Because like he's going to be going to training camp when that kid's like three months old, four months yeah. old. If you're a parent, you know that's usually the worst time for sleeping. <laughs> Like you want to get away <laughs> like three months to six months it's, uh, with both my kids. Anyways, that was like the time where they were up the most overnight. Yeah. I don't want to get away from that. So good on you, Panay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's, that is awesome. Now you got to think it kind of can work out because you start going at it. The May time frame, you're, you're going to have your, your baby at just the right time. Right. And, and, and yeah. May and June is a great time for, for a football player to, to get in busy. So. Good, good on. Yeah, my, my <laughs> daughter was born here. on on uh, the Monday morning of opening weekend in two thousand and eight. <laughs> <laughs> it was great though because I had a newborn that year. And I didn't care about the Lions losing so much. It was it was nice for me. Yeah, we did the math and it was Valentine's Day. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, three is a magic number. Uh, baby Sewell, the Goffs, the Sewells. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, yeah. what a, what a great what Very a great cool. scene going on in cool. Lions Land. All right, let's get past the warm ups. Let's get into it right now. We've got some injury news, new player injury um, news, and it's this is interesting. Right. I I, this is this is, this is this is interesting. One Kirby, motherfucking Joseph, <laughs> comes back and says, "Ouch, I had surgery on my hip." And yeah. you're not going to see a whole lot of me doing a whole lot of anything until a whole lot of training camp. But I'll be back for training camp. No worries, man. Um, I, that may be a paraphrase. Uh, <laughs> it's close. It is close, though. I mean, he was he was rocking the sunglasses. He looked he looked great in the New Jerseys, by the way. Those, yeah, we'll get to we'll get to those. Oh yeah, man, it's sharp. Um, but yeah, so Kirby's hurt. Uh, had a little bit of surgery. He'll be back. Uh, there's also been rumors around that that maybe we'll see some Tracy Walker back in town. Um, just because he's a little, little, little hurdy now, potentially at safety. He, uh, oh, Tracy posted a picture of himself in the Detroit airport, although nothing has come of that. So yet, as of yet, maybe it's one of those where like, he's there and like, I don't know, maybe his apartment at least ran out. Maybe, you know, there's any number of reasons why it could be. Um, but it could be that he's looking to come back. Oh, that was in the background. That'd be picture. interesting. They can certainly use him. Because right now the safety room is Kirby Joseph coming off a of hip surgery. If Yatumali Fanu, who's missed one third of the games and more than one third of the practices since he was drafted, and Brandon Joseph. That's your safety room, folks. <laughs> they need help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, Riley, I'm going to do this. I appreciate you very, very much. Uh, if I were to have a comment read aloud, it'd be this one. You guys are sincerely outstanding. Absolutely love your work and the heart behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Riley. It's nice. you're, Thank you. You're very kind. And I appreciate you getting that uh, that interview set up with us with Scott Mitchell. That was for those that like if people have calmed down and didn't hear that, I recommend you go back and listen to the Scott Mitchell interview because it is really, really good and illustrative of his thinking. I think there's a lot of people that formed an opinion and to hear his own words, it's a little bit different than probably what most people thought. And he's yeah. he's a thoughtful guy. He's he's an interesting cat. Right. There's no question about it. Uh, but but he's he's a thoughtful guy. There's another one we're working together. We'll get this one in the offseason just as a touch base to go back in time a little bit. Uh, Zach Zenner, the man we love. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have him back on and talk about some of the things he's doing. He's an agent now Absolutely. and uh, he's got some folks he's repping and uh, we'll have him on. But uh, it's always great. We had him on before. He's such a great guy, guy. Guy, you know what I mean? It's it's nice to kind of follow a guy through yeah. through and afterwards. He so gets we'll get it. He, he, yeah. it uh, I, I have a couple of questions like queued in my head to ask him already. And I, he's a pretty straight shooter, so I th I'm pretty sure he'll answer them too. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, he's a good cat. All right. And then lastly, we've got Brandon here saying we'd like to see Quandre Diggs in a Lions uniform. Riz would hate that. Riz would hate that. I, he thinks Quandre's a short, ineffectual player who can't do anything on the field. Wasn't that what you said, Riz? You hear that, Quandre? I will say this. Um, <laughs> If you watched him in 2023, you don't want him in 2024. He was not good in Seattle. And I say that as perhaps his biggest cheerleader. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very concerned that he's done. Very concerned that mm -hmm. he's done. And if you talk to Seattle people, they will tell you that they think he played a year too long already. Just Interesting. Just throw that out there. I'm, I'm not going to doubt Quandre Diggs. Um, he, he knows. He knows how much I love him. I've told him that. Uh, but 
if he would be a band aid on top of a band aid um, at this point. Yeah, uh, he's had a lot of he's had a lot of physical ailments go on with him. The other thing is he's also not a tremendous fit for this defense yeah. um, in terms of how they, especially when they when they play more man coverage. That's just not where he's thrived. So uh, it would be great to have him back. I love. I would love for the redemption arc of the Detroit Lions to include the redemption arc of Quandre Diggs, who, to me, the situation that led to his exile to Seattle um, epitomizes the very low point of the Quintricia era. And I would love for Quandre to come back and you know exact vengeance upon that by helping lead this Lions team to a Super Bowl title, but. The dude who's played for like the last 16 to 20 games, he ain't helping much. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. It is unfortunate. It sucks because he's a great dude. And I, I know he's got the right mentality. I know he has the grit fit. But, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're in a bind at safety already because you never know what's going to happen with Iffy. This is a guy who missed two games with a finger injury when the finger wasn't even broken. Um, I know he I know he has grown since that point in terms of like I have to learn how to play with not being 100 percent that was a big hurdle for him and he mm-hmm. overcame that last year I'm very happy about that he played so but well he's... when he was there last year this is one yeah. of those things where if he please please be the guy that we think you are and that the team yeah. thought you was you were because yeah. what an amazing what an amazing player that this would guy be, could be you know what I mean that would it be would... sweet because uh yeah, another opportunity for an arc, right? Absolutely. Um, but keep in mind, we went through this same arc with Amani Oruwariye a couple of years ago, and I'm not convinced that we're not living that again. I was, I was so sure he was turning the corner. I was. Everybody was, Chris. Was, bro. Everybody I, was. I missed. And then what one. happened? I missed hard. Yeah. That's a, I deserve a horn um, on that one. Sorry. That, that's, <laughs> it was hundred uh, percent behind him. Well, that's one of those where where you know anxiety filled me i can't ignore that history with a player that everybody's like oh we're good there we don't need a second cornerback we're good. like okuda's gonna be healthy and and you know over warrior he picked off all those passes it was great he's gonna develop more this offseason he's gonna be the man we don't need a cornerback we're good stop hurting and me. three games in they're <laughs> both dog shit stop hurting me man. and we're like why didn't we draft any corners well nobody wanted a corner back then you touch feel that way about safety spot. this year, quite frankly. I'm I'm worried that history repeats itself. Um, that's that's one of the curses of having a history degree is that I overanalyze historical situations and apply them when they don't always apply to the future. It would be great if it didn't, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be comfortable trying to re- with the idea that we don't do more than that. You're um, you're touching me in all the wrong spots, man. I it's I I'm, oh man. I'm one of those people also like. Like, I love insurance. I'm a whale for insurance salesmen, like, guilty, just the way I am. <laughs> I like to have I like to have positional redundancy. I like to have backups to my backups um, in life, in everything. I am someone, I do actually have an extra spare tire for my car in my garage, along with the one in my trunk. That's who I am. That's how I was brought up. So I do freak out a little bit more than most people about like two tires blowing out rather than just one. Like that, <laughs> that's who I am. I can't help that. You should work in the nuclear <laughs> industry. <laughs> um, WMW two. My brother did for a long time, and he's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a little stuffed lion right there. That everywhere, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. That's where Jeff hurt me just now. Everywhere. <laughs> so to show him on the doll. <laughs> oh God. Oh, yeah. R-O-R-E-A was was one that I I learned how to pronounce his name. It was one of the, the most difficult things I've had to do. No, I don't say most difficult. But anyway, I'll go with it. It's retort rhetoric. Oh, rhetoric. It's, I, I, it was the most difficult thing I had to do in my life is pronounce O-R-O-R-E-A's name. Ooh, I'm a, and and I did it, and then he failed me. He, I, I did it for him. Why couldn't he do it for me? What's going on? Anyway. It, oh, well. it happens, man. It, 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 this isn't like this happens to every team. Like I can I can point to every there's a there's a player on every team where like oh he was pretty good to finish last year. I don't think he's replicating that. Um, there's 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 we'll one see. specifically in Chicago um, who I don't think that Bears fans think that way about. But I I do. We'll see. 
Uh, Detroit Fan Man. But what is the new model? Something like It Takes More. Perfectly fits Iffy and many others, too. Can't wait to see the that new was. Ones. Was that Brock Wright who let that drop? I want to say. I think um, so. Like, yeah, yeah. The Brock. So. Yeah. By the way, it's cool that he's back. I like that, and uh, you know, I do too. I'm, I'm glad that he said it. I'm glad that his media session went the way that it did, um, where he talked about. He didn't talk about San Francisco much. He talked about how much Detroit means to him. I thought that was a good way for him to go. Well, he also talked about the mortgage in San Francisco. That was actually a pretty hilarious line that he had there. But no, I'm glad Brock's back. I think he he's an understated, underrated piece of the offense. I think, and he's it's not having Brock Wright is the uh, Bob Quinn. You know, create a whole method of building a team. Create a hole and fill it with lesser for more. That was that was the whole his whole the entirety of his GM ship can be summed up in create a roster hole, oh fill it with God. a lesser player that you pay more money to. That was everything the, he did. Everything he did. The the <sighs> but oh just to go back in time real quick when they cut Eric Ebron and didn't have a backup plan. I'm like okay, look, I get. I wanted Eric Ebron gone too, but like again. Have a plan of succession. Have some insurance in place. Have something. They just caught him. <laughs> like, yeah. no, no plan on what to do next. Like, oh my god, that bothered me. We don't. So Jordan, mad at that regime. Jordy in the chat. We don't need Brock, but we could sign Jesse James. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Jordy. Oh man! All right, that one touches me the most. Yeah, you bring out the duck. <laughs> All right. Uh, from Kirby's injury and uh, a little bit of a roster hole that we'll talk about as we get closer. We want to talk about some of the big news. The Lions release of the new uniforms. What what an awesome show, first and foremost. I know there was stuff yes. that came on during the day and whatever. That production and the role, everything, it was, you know what? Was I could have known what they looked like a year ago, and it still would have been absolutely fantastic. It's must-see if you haven't watched it. Definitely check out the Lions production. Their team is so good. I mean, they are just so good at what they do, man. Go check that out. It, it, it's it's fantastic. And look, people are some people are superstitious. Some people like to be part of the tribe, so they're just going to complain about the black because they do. I love the black. I think they did it well. I really want to see that you're people. Are, you're going to excoriate me. I know people are. I want to see the black jerseys with the white bottoms. I think that would be pretty freaking sharp. I think you talk about contrast and, and standing out. Yeah. Nobody said anything about that that I've heard. I would love to see what that looks like. It could be it could be like a dumpster fire. It could be terrible, but I would just like to see what it looks like. You know what I mean? I think they'd be kind of cool. But uh those those yeah. uniforms are fire across the board. Every iteration I've seen has done just fantastic. So my worry with the black was that they would look like the Carolina Panthers too much. And they are not dissimilar, but they're different enough that you're not going to confuse one for the other. Yep. And I, you know, I, I love the way I, I, they talked about like freshening up the blue and it's without having seen them in person yet. I wasn't there last night. It's hard to describe, but like from the pictures that I see, it's like, it's like they've made it a little bit more vivid. Um, it's not as muted as the old blue. It's it's a little bit. It's not really brighter, but it comes across as brighter. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. it's a fantastic accent color, and I love the helmet. I yeah. love the helmet with the blue and the black. Yeah. That looks very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, again, the black uniform. I would have preferred that they go. Um, and we talked about this in the I guess say, like gunmetal gray, deep slate, something not completely black, but very dark hued um in that that realm but uh, it looks it looks good and this is another one this was true with the new york jets uniforms as well they look better on the players than they do on the rack yeah and i think that's yeah. that's important uh because not every team gets that right Bengals, um <laughs> texans <laughs> the blue face masks i mean they just look they look really yeah. really good across the board too. i yeah. love the varsity font numbers I, and look this is this is old school this is a, this is like 
high school, college. The, this font always reminds me. It's, it's it's varsity. You can look it up what the font is on the on the mm-hmm. internet. It's not Wayne fonts, which is actually a font. Um, but there, <laughs> there's um, Wayne the, has his own font. That's yeah, brilliant. that's that's the old Lions font. Like when you see the the, the stylized ah. Lions written, it's it's in Wayne's Wayne font. Um, that's beautiful. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, it's <laughs> awesome. But the varsity <laughs> font is just so classic, and the numbers blocked like that. Like you couldn't see shit on those uniforms. It was the numbers before. It was. I love maddening. being able to tell if it's Jamo or, or whoever was wearing number eight this year catching the pass because I had no freaking idea. And you know, who, you know, who, you know who wears that style of number or who who Earl fucking Campbell. If you remember Earl Campbell, he'll yeah. kill you as a running back. Love you, blue baby. He hurt himself too, <laughs> by the way. But he, it, it, you talk about yeah. grit, right? That those 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 the font on those numbers to me says grit. Says I am going to run through you. I don't care if I'm a defender, an offender. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I'm a special teams player. The, it's it's just powerful to me, and and I just love it. It just stands there and says, "I'm 87." F you like that, that's yeah. it. It's a powerful. I love it. I absolutely love what they did with those. And the fact that you can read them and see them. I was a little nervous when I first saw it, that it was a little bit small, but nope, looks good. Looks really good. Yeah, love, it's it. good. love it. Love it's it. very clean. It's, it's going to be easy to read the player numbers. It's going to be easy to read the player names. Um, I, I, I personally love that. Um, for the, the, the times that I do go to games, preseason, regular season, whatever, yeah. but also on the practice field, like, I hate having to borrow Michael Harris binoculars to like tell who a player is, you know, that's 40 yards down the field. Like I should be able to see that. That's I'm his reading that glasses. Just so yet. you know, they're not actually binoculars. <laughs> no, he, he has binoculars. I'm teasing. Well, I'm teasing. Mike, Mike has, I, love I like Mike a lot. I'm, I'm just teasing Mike. Don't give up. <laughs> he's, he's a fantastic dude. Uh, he's a fantastic. He dude. really is. He is. Uh, yeah. He's, he's a good one. We're blessed yeah. to have him. Yeah. Well, we do. Oh, man. All right. So there you go. You, you've got some new uniforms coming up. Campbell yeah. asked for black uniforms. Dan Campbell asked for them. And Rod she Wood did. said, you got to win the division first, son. And then Campbell said, bet. There he was. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nailed I love it. it. Oh, I love it. The other thing that I love is I love the accent on the old helmets where they've they've changed the stripe down the middle. I love that. It looks great. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I I freely admit I am not someone I don't really care a lot about the uniform style, color, and everything. But I don't either. It, I, we you we know, breeze you know past these it, every year. These these conversations. Yeah. It's like not going to talk about it. Let's just go on and and. Yeah. But you have to now because it's such a drastic and good change. And oh. I, I think they got it right. I really do. And yeah. I, 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 you know, the the blind survey of having my wife and my kids. You know, I got an eighteen year old son. I got a fifteen year old daughter, and they're they're all like, "Yeah, it's good. It looks great." Um, my son actually really liked the new white. Um, so yeah. I love the whites. Like, I can't it, wait it, for the all whites again. He's, he's like, it looks white now, like on the old jerseys. It was kind of like like dirty white, like mm. like it was like it was like a, it was like a, you'd taken a white t shirt and washed it a few times, and it, you know it loses that lost like that's what the old one looked like. The, the it's bright, man. It looks it looks sharp. I, I yeah. liked it a lot. And they yeah. will still have the dress whites. Um, that is still one of the combinations, even with the the subtle changes to it. Um, yeah, you can find all that on the page, the web page, by the way, that they created. Going back to the social the the Lions media team and and staff like that, they created a fantastic website that shows all this off. They put a ton of time and effort into it, and they got that right too. Um, yeah. My hat is off to them. They, they don't get job. much wrong these days. I, and no, they really don't. I was, I was talking to to Eamon about this. They're just this organization has absolutely changed with with Sheila on down. When when those changes came forth, this is what an improved organization looks like. And and. You know, I talk about leadership. I'm not going to go into it, but that's, I think that's one of the key pieces, the key changes as to how this, how people get things right. Cause they, they get to work and do what they do best without a bunch of micromanagement and they get to enjoy it while they do it. The creativity can flow up, down, across the organization. And, and this is, this is the output of, a, of an organization like this. Love it. Absolutely love it. One quick thing on that. The WCF is now a patch on the back of the helmet. Um, yes. and you can, fr- from what I've seen, again, I haven't been there yet. I will be there, um, next week, all week, <laughs> but, uh, 
Um, you can still see it, but it's not on the jersey anymore. And I really wanted that because it it represented William Clay Ford, and he's an important figure in Lions history and deserves that. But it sent the wrong message to fans because we remember what do we remember about William Clay Ford? Like it didn't work for with him as Ever. the owner. It just didn't. Ever. And it it was a reminder of it was a legacy that we didn't want to keep reliving. And I think this is a very good fresh start for it. And the fact that his daughter is in charge while that happened, I think that makes it very palatable and easy to see Special. you know why A, why it's still gonna be part of the the ensemble, yeah. but also why it's not prominent anymore. And I, I really appreciate that. I think that will help more than anything remind people of the good that he did um, in getting the team downtown, in doing some things that kept the team financially viable when yeah. it, it it could have gone a different way. And I say that as a Clevelander who watched it go a different way. And I say that as a, a former Indianapolis resident who benefited from it not going that way in Baltimore um, around that same time. So uh, just, it, it, it's good that it, it's, it's good that it's still there, but it's also good that it's not in your face anymore. Yeah. I had to shout out to Tampa Detroit lion uh, for the super chat. Thank you. Happy Friday. Best lions show on the planet. Appreciate you. Uh, very, very kind to super chat like that. Thank you very much. Appreciate you and the support for the show, man. You're always here. Well, I got to apologize for the Goodbye. lighting behind me. Um, normally I'm not in this position, but I'm home alone. Um, this is the first time I've been home alone in months. Um, and uh, I chose to do it where I'm close to my internet, so I don't have internet issues. And uh, unfortunately, the reflection off the white garage, uh, <laughs> my neighbor's garage is killing me. For the um, first but... time, Riz, you're not the brightest one in the room. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Our organization has been uh, the turning point. They don't seem to be getting much wrong right now. And this is one of the things. We'll, we're getting to uh, our, our thoughts and ideas ahead of the draft here, but... Before we do, I mean, th this is a, this is a key point. I don't know of a year that I've been this chill heading into a Detroit Lions draft in my in my entire life. I really don't know. I'm yeah. I I'm I don't know what they could do to to frustrate me. Right? I I don't know that I'm not going to like the pick for six months. Right? Until I see what the output yeah. is. I remember. Eric Ebron, like I'll never forget. And I, I, I scarred my wife. I feel bad. It was like, my son was young and it was the draft and it's like, Hey, we're going to have a little family event. There was snacks, the whole thing we're going to put on. And they announced the oh, Ebron no. picked pick. And I just, I, I screamed. I just emoted. Like I, I don't, I'm not, you know, like that vocal like that. And I was like, no, fuck! I just like, it went out and my wife was terrified. <laughs> what happened? My son was terrified. I was so mad at that pick oh god it's oh, not gonna happen I, they 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 could pick a ham sandwich or a waffle sorry <laughs> they could pick a waffle and you know what i'll be like okay it's probably the best waffle you'll ever see i i, I i'm i'm oh, i can't be frustrated and I'm, this isn't a challenge brad by the way but <laughs> i'm going back in time now i'm looking at the 2014 draft because i'm trying to remember who i wanted them to take um, um really quick brandon Kara says, let's hope that the WCF sticker doesn't become the priority patch in the Wings jersey. <laughs> <laughs> it may well be. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So where's Eric Ebron? Who do I want? Taylor Lewan, Odell Beckham, and Aaron yeah. Donald were the yeah. next three picks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we didn't oh, need Aaron there, Donald. I'll tell you who I I loved Ryan Shazier in that draft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, who else did I like in that one? Oh, that was the Johnny Mansfield draft. <laughs> Coming up next, Hodges. I love Jason Verrett. Turned out he couldn't stay healthy. Right. Um, he was he was a fun one. Who else did I really like? Um, Jimmy Ward. Aaron yeah, Donald is the obvious one, right? And, yeah. And we had well, Sue remember and back, Fairley. Just to, just to go, yeah, exactly. To go back in time, and Sammy Lee Hill was there too. Like yeah. they had a good threesome. Um, it didn't last but a month, but you know, sometimes you, the best threesomes are the ones that don't last. Do you see the, the, the restraint I'm exercising here is, and you didn't, I'm, I'm I, very proud see, of you, Chris. Thank you. I'm the adult <laughs> in the room now. <laughs> All of a sudden you're not so bright. See, <laughs> 
All right. right. <laughs> um, so there you go. There's uniform. I, just so pe- people know, um, fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. If you go there, it, it takes you right to the Fanatics site. You can buy all the jerseys and all the stuff, but they give us a little kickback. It doesn't cost you anything more. And it's a great way to support the show by doing something you're going to do anyway. There's great, great jerseys, great stuff there. Please use that link, fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com, when you do a do your buys and it helps us out. We appreciate you. So thank you for doing that. So Chris, uh, I'm going to ask you a quick question. If you were to get a new lion's Jersey, what one would you get? See, hmm. I want to, I know you're I not like a helmet. big Jersey guy. Yeah. I want yeah. the blue helmet. That's what I want. I'm a helmet. I like helmets, but they're so expensive for the real, the good ones. That's what I want. Yeah. What, but I do want one of these jerseys. My, I've kind of not, been getting player jerseys i got a jersey i got a dan campbell jersey in the old style i just i love like we've been talking about that he played here that he coaches here and what he means from a leadership perspective for me look i love players i could could, anyone could see me in a golf golf jersey golf jesus a golf jersey or a saint brown jersey or um you know anzalone jersey right i i could absolutely wear one of those and be freaking proud. You know what I mean? I had a Spielman jersey way back in the day. I love I love that kind of a, I had a I still have my Vladdy signed Red Wings jersey. That's the kind of player I loved. Good defense, hard nose, fuck a man up kind of player. Uh I, I I love that stuff. But I just really identify now with Campbell and his his what he is, his his soul. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the jersey I get. Not that I don't support the players, like I said, but I just I would get a Campbell one. I'm always a black. I love black. It's my color, right? So I would probably go with a black Campbell jersey, but I feel like I'd have to wear the blue helmet with it too. <laughs> I just yeah. I don't know why. I just it, it's like that's that's such a good look, such a good look. I love those blacks. I really do. Yeah, they they did them right. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the black, and again, I would have preferred like not just black, like gunmetal gray, something like that. But yeah. they yeah. something really close to black, but not black, but. It looks really good. Now I'm excited to see it in person next week um, when we get over there for for the draft and uh, pre pre draft press conferences and stuff like that. That's going to be Bob Olan, the Branch Black Jersey. Now see, now you ooh, That's see. I love Brian Branch. That's yeah. he's he's that exactly that kind of player, right? I, I oh god, Bobble <laughs> spending my money. Okay, so same question he's, back at you, Riz. Same question back at you. You're not a Jersey guy at all. Like I'm more of a Jersey guy than you I'm are. I'm not. Um, I the last NFL jersey I got was Miles Garrett. Um, and his at the beginning of his second year, so that was 2018. That's the last NFL jersey that I bought. Now my son has a lot. <laughs> so you can't afford a, a jersey for athlete. you is the real story, right? <laughs> yeah. Um I like I like the white jerseys. Um I like that. Um and the blue, like I, I like I like the accents. I don't know. I would probably get the like the player I would get probably gonna go Taylor Decker. Mm, yeah. Just because he is I love my own line. <laughs> and he's someone like he's someone that most I won't say most, but a, a fair portion of Lions fans really didn't like for the simple reason that he came from Ohio State. He was an offensive lineman when they didn't necessarily need a great offensive lineman. They had so many other things that they needed to. And he wasn't great right away. He was good, but he wasn't like the player that he is now. Right. And over time. And he's admitted this. We, in fact, uh, last year, last summer, like when, or last mini camp, it was. We asked him, like, "What's it like now that the fans love you?" And he, he, he was. He gave a very emotionally balanced but like serious answer. Like, it meant the world to him yeah. that the, the attitude about him had changed with these fans. Like, he always felt like he was never embraced, and that changed. And I really appreciate that because that's that's what Detroit, to me, is about as somebody who's not from Detroit um, but has been largely accepted by Detroit. I, I married a – my wife is from Canton. Her family is from East Point, um, formerly East Detroit. Like getting accepted into that and with – I don't want to say skepticism, but it wasn't exactly warm at first. 
you know, um, both professionally and that way, like, yeah, you, it's, it, it's a different route, but it, it shows the, it shows the humanity of Detroit. And when you prove yourself to Detroit, they love you like nothing else, man. And I know that Decker feels that. And I, I really, that, that to me is symbolic of what the way this team is, because there were a lot of people, even like, you know, you, you win that opening week in, in Kansas city and like, everybody's like super bowl. And then you come back and you lose badly. Well, the score, the score of the, of the, the Seattle game was a 37, 31 wasn't bad, but the, they didn't play well. No. <laughs> and like, and everybody was instantly like, Oh, it's all a house of cards. It's falling apart already. I don't want to say all people, but there was a lot of people that did that. And I love the fact that the people who stayed with it, who stayed level headed, who embraced it and didn't, like get overreactionary got rewarded. Yeah. And I think that that's the way that ta- to me, Taylor Decker epitomizes that. So that would be why I would get it. Why I would get his a very long winded way. Great, great answer. I also really great love answer. his ink. I'm not a tattoo guy, but he's got some yeah. like beautiful ink. Done. He's, he's the one guy that softened my sense about Ohio state. Still hate him. I would still black out the Ohio State tat, but no, I, I agree. The rest of them are are, are fantastic, um, but no, I, 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 I the O line guys. The more I've gotten into football, and the more I've really kind of dove in deep, the O line they're they're a special breed. They're a special mindset. They they're they're just I love them. I love them. They're my people. You know what I mean. So I I I dig the the heart, the soul, and the and the sense of family they have. Um, it's just, it's just uh, any one of those guys is a Jersey. I'm already broke. I'm already broke because of all the jerseys I want to buy now. Like my kid's not going to go to college next year. Thanks to all this. Now, (laughs) Riley here, uh, LMAO, I want Chris to get the blue helmet and wear the helmet on post game shows. I would, I would, if they would sell one in the, in public that would fit on my big melon, I would, I would totally wear one, (laughs) but I, I need, I need like a, I need a lineman helmet if I'm going to do it. Cause I got a, I got a. I'm a big fella. I'm a big fella. In you all need ways, the uh, right? you need the Lake and Tomlinson version. Uh, I, rem- I <laughs> my remember my shoulders are like one and a half or one and three quarters Riz, and he's got what six inches on me. <laughs> yeah, and width. I mean, yeah. it's, I'm everywhere. I'm a big guy. Yeah, down on my knee. You are a big guy. You're you're a big framed guy. <laughs> yeah, big I, bone. It doesn't hurt that Decker's also uh, Decker's one of the players that's taller than me, and I do actually appreciate that. Like, because that doesn't, you know. I spend most of my outside of football time with volleyball and basketball, and I'm not big in those situations. And I am big when I'm around a lot of the football players because a lot of them are, you know, they're wide receivers, you know, they're you know, skill position players. Um, and just to, to, to be able to look at a, a guy like that, it, it's cool, man. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I will say the, uh, I, I would get an Aleem one, and Aleem rocking oh, the God, the white, <laughs> the way he did. He, he looks so sharp, so man, and I love Aleem. Um, you remember, yeah. remember going back into, into the draft shows of the draft pass. Yeah, I hated the Levi Anzarike pick from the minute they made it, and I said on our show, you can go back and look for it. I would have taken Aleem McNeil here because I think he's a better player. <laughs> Guess what? They got him the next round. And my pants came off. And I was, I, I remember this. I filmed that. I was at my parents' house outside of Cleveland for that weekend. <laughs> and my pants did indeed come off. I, I had to excuse myself for a little bit. I just had this feeling of like, uh, I was going to be walking around with any pants on. <laughs> Not going to lie, I've always loved the Leem. He was, he was my number, I want to say 44 player in that draft. I, I love a Leem more having talked to him a couple of times at training camp at what a genuinely wonderful person he is. Yes. I, 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 it's you'll get me yes. as, as a player, as somebody in that, like you've got, you have no reason to be cool to people, right? You don't have to, you don't have to, you've got all the money. You've really got the positional power. Like people are dying to see you just a moment of your time there. Uh, you know what I mean? And he takes the time and is heartfelt and is a kind, wonderful human being. And he doesn't need to be. That's he, 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 I was done. I was hooked. Love me some Aleem. He's a, and he's a dude. beast on the field. He's a yes, he is. He's everything, everything you want in a football player. And that, you know, like 
There you go. He's a lion. He's a Detroit lion. You know what I mean? That's him that's next to DJ is. Reader inside Hutch. Like, put him in that gap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bigger oh, bone. There go the right pants. <laughs> there go the pants. Oh, the blood is rushing to my head and I'm getting dizzy because <laughs> it's the other one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Frank the Tank from Malone's. What's up, fellas? Number 77. Frank Ragnow, white jersey. That's a man. The Lions. That's Love you, Frank. Too. Love you, brother. That's a good one. Too. Um, okay, let's go. We got it. We got it. Okay, we got that. We got we we got we got the uniforms covered. We've covered it. We've spent more of the uniforms this year than we have in the nine years of the show previous. I would agree. They deserved it. They deserved it though. Good job, Lions. Folks, if you want one want one one more time, fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. If you use that link, it gives us a little bit of credit. They give us a kickback. Doesn't cost you anything more, but it does help the show. Fanatics.detroitlionspodcast.com. Anytime you buy your Lions gear. Appreciate you for doing that. All right, let's get into it. Um we got a, a. We're going to go into the Brad Holmes presser. We're going to talk about this right now, and and what ha- what happened in the presser, uh, how it breaks down. We're going to just start right out right with a quote from Brad Holmes. He went up to the podium. The first thing he said: "You better back the fuck up out my face, goddammit! I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Don't play with me." That will forever be my Brad Holmes quote, and I hope one day he actually says that. <laughs> there would be there would be nothing that makes me happier. I, I could, I could, you could put me in a coffin and put me in the ground at that point because my life is complete. <laughs> Brad Holmes come up and say, back up, I'm from Detroit. Don't play with me. <laughs> oh my God, I loved that video. That's great. I have, I've pulled up his actual transcript and it, scarily that's not in there, but it should be. Yeah, it, it didn't it make the, yeah, it didn't make the bullets. So uh, we'll talk about it really quick. Uh, he did first things, and this is, uh, this is, Talks to to the man that Brad Holmes is. Uh, he steps up on the, on stage, and the first thing he does is give credit to the the area scouts, praising their performance, the efforts they did in the April meetings, the the kind of final ramp up. Brian Hudsmith, uh, direct, college college director for his full uh, first full time year in the role, and the and an accommodation for his leadership and everything he did. Uh, gave shout outs to Ray Agnew, John Dorsey, Mike Martin, uh, Don Curran for their critical roles and uh, the coaching staff for what they did. First things right off the top. Thank you to all you folks who made this possible. Did such a great job. Testament to his character. It wasn't an afterthought. It wasn't anything. He hit it, hit that bell right out of the gate. And that's the kind of thing where, you know, you got a good man you're dealing with. Yeah. And it wasn't like, it wasn't lip service either. Like he talked about this. I I think it went for like the first three minutes of his talk. Like he, and he, I will say this. One of the things that I love about Brad Holmes, when he goes up there, he does not have note cards. He does not have cheat sheets. He's being Brad. That's who he is. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, I I got real tired of a a, a certain GM at a team that I covered in the past who had freaking Cliff's notes everywhere. Yeah. The authenticity, right? They are who they are and they're, 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 they're nobody else. Okay, so then he starts, he goes into the, the difficulties and challenges of picking at 29 and maintaining the standard. And it's, you know, getting the player, the player you love, that kind of stuff. It's funny because you think about it, oh, oh, it's so hard. But you look at the players he gets later in the draft. I feel like this is kind of more towards his sweet spot. Not that he's had trouble with his first pick being number two or number three overall. Right. But right. this you're getting, he's, he, that's always, I don't know. It's an easy pick almost, but I mean, so many teams get it wrong, but you know, when you're that early, you, you're going to, it's, you're going to do pretty well. Thank you, Jacksonville. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, oh my God. <laughs> but I feel like this is where Brad really earns his money. Like really starting in places like this where other people just kind of follow a formula almost and just BPA, who is it on the board? They go with it, done. He's got a cluster of players he loves. He talked about that a little bit later in the presser. This is who we love. This is who we're going for. And if we have to move in the draft to get to one of those clusters of those guys we love, we'll do that. And that's I, I, it's a fantastic strategy. It will. And it's, it's worked very, very well for him. I... I love the fact. So I'll, I'll skip ahead here to one of the things that he did was he was asked, will you, will you disappoint the fans that are there from Detroit by trading out of the first round? And he gave a very Brad Holmes answer. By the way, this is, so, this has been a topic of conversation that we've had in the 
the podcast Slack channel, and Chris and I were both agreed, like, right away, like, he doesn't you care. Fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> if it's the best move for the team, he will do whatever it is, even if there's, you know, 70% of the people that are there are Lions fans left at that point. Um, he will trade. Like, yeah. it's it's not even, like, a consideration that he wouldn't because of that. Like, he's not deviating from his plan to make, you know, 1,250 people in downtown Detroit happy for a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can I, Come back I, next Jeff, night. You got more picks. <laughs> so here's the thing. Brad, I, 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 Jeff, I'm sorry, Jeff Homan. Uh, this is a year that we'll see if Brad Holmes is as good at making these picks. No more top five picks. Time to earn that pay. I would say, okay, I can see your point and why you make that point. But I will just turn around and point at Amon Ra. Deep. Easy, yeah. like I don't want to say Aleem, easy. Aleem Nobody else one. got him. Aleem, right? Yeah. Nobody else made those plays, and he made those deep. Why couldn't I trust him at twenty nine if I can trust him at seventy? Yeah, Derek. Derek Barnes is another one, a really yeah. good player that that he got later in the process. Um, I love, I love how he's attacked, with a couple of exceptions, the middle rounds, like rounds two through four, two through five. Yeah. I think he does better there than just about any other GM. And yeah. uh, I'm excited. I would be personally excited if they traded out of 29 and picked up 36 and 100. As mm -hmm. an example, that would be the Washington commanders who have both those picks. Would you do that trick? Would you do that trade 36 and 100 for 29? And maybe, maybe um, you get like a fifth next year or something like that. And you send them back a sixth. If I'm Brad, Yes. Yeah. If I'm Bob Quinn, yeah. well, I hope Bob Quinn's working for the <laughs> for the damn uh, Washington what, Commanders, were, whatever the hell they are. They were for the Browns, and they're not going to. They have 54, so they're not. A All candidate. he can do is trade up. That's the best he can do to get close, right? <laughs> if he's yeah. not picking number one overall, you got problems, and so he's going to try to trade his way out. Uh, with Brad, though, I would absolutely trust him, and that's that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm not. I'm not knocking on Jeff. That's you know. That's I. I no. totally get what, yeah. what you're thinking and why why you know you're you're leaning that way because it is. The, if you kind of look at it in isolation, it's the it's first round, harder. right? And it is harder to choose 29 than second, absolutely because. Look, you got your choice of one or two players if you're picking second every freaking time, right. right? 29th, things have to come. But I just know that he's going to find a guy that uh, that's going to work. And because of the the quality of players he's been able to pull out of the draft later, that's the only reason that I have no no qualms about him doing this. And I and I think he's – I again, I walk in. I feel like I'm not going to think it's a bad pick until like six months or eight months later when I've seen the player on the field. And then I might say, oh, God, that wasn't any good. But even then, like it's if he gets injured or something else, it's like you can't – you can't you can't know someone's going to get injured kind of a thing. It's like, oh, As long as they weren't sucked. injured when you drafted him. He, yeah, he just sucked, right? Or he had a – um a Titus Young in year they, one, right? Okay, you missed that one. Had, like, they haven't had but, anybody who, like, really, like, Broderick Martin and Colby Soares, the, the, the book is far from written on them, but they're not off to the best starts. But we knew going into when they were drafted that they were not going to be part of the, they were not going to be significant contributors as rookies and probably not this coming year either. Um, and so it, it's hard to say that, those were misses because we haven't, we don't know yet. It's too early. Yeah. The the biggest miss that to me that he's had was was Levi Anzarike because you drafted a guy who couldn't practice and who'd had he wound up needing spinal fusion surgery and God yeah. bless Levi for busting his ass to try to get back as as best as he can and and by the way his story is not done yet in Detroit either. He's got a chance to prove himself this year with a defensive line coach that absolutely believes in him. Um, I've said this on the huge show. I think I said it on here too. Um, when I talked to to Titans reporter Teron Davenport, he's like, when when Terrell talked to me about the Lions, that was the first name he brought up. Yeah. Like, so there's like that book's not written yet either. But I I hope um, I'm still as as I revealed earlier, I'm very risk averse. I'm very insurance related. I'm hoping that they don't take somebody who's got pre-existing injuries or a history of them. Amarius Mims, um, in the solo video I did, um, that was one that really bothered me uh, because he, this is a guy who got hurt working out twice. 
stay the hell away from that. And I, I do defer with Brad on that. Um, and freely admit that to him, uh, that, you know, I, there are, there are injury risks that I would not take that I think that the Lions would consider in this draft. And this rake straw is a big example of that. I don't want anything to do with him because of his injury history and his style of play is risking more of that. And that scares me. I, I have a very good feeling that the Lions really like him. Don't know if he'll be picked, but it won't be because they don't like him if it's not picked. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, I don't know if he's going to get picked or not, but that would be one where I'd be like, ah, come on, was Kamari Lasseter there? You know, was was Max Melton there? Um, was you know, draft talk? Uh, draft talk is next. Was, was Renardo Green there? I'm sorry, I can't help it. It's draft <laughs> season, know, baby. No, I know you're you're bursting out of your pants. I get it. I get it. I get it. We got to talk about Brad though. Draft. We got Brad. We got yes, Brad. Honor thy homes. Commandment number yes. three, I believe. Honor thy homes. Um, <laughs> so He's done a fantastic job, and I he, expect him to continue to do a fantastic job. His point on disappointing fans was, yes, it'll disappoint fans momentarily, but he thinks that as he, they see how things play out, they will forgive. And as training camp kids, they'll understand. They'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, and they start to come around. I like that attitude, and I'll tell you why. Because it tells you he's not reacting or he's not picking afraid of the reaction in town. He is making his right. decisions. They are making those decisions as a team and in in, in that room, in that draft room. Um, I, I like that. Okay. I'm not worried about disappointing the fans. Number one, because I know I'm not. Number two, I know they're going to come around to it. I'm doing my picks. And I love the lone wolf. That was the phrase yes. that he said. And I, I, I really yes. like it because he. this is something, again... I'm, some people get it, they're prickly about uh, talking about leadership, but it's such an important part of sports and it's such an underrated and undiscussed piece. But yeah. um, the the idea of groupthink, right? Bay of Pigs, groupthink. That's the 100% you know, lesson in, in how that happened. Um, people in a room, want, as he said, want to be part of the tribe. And it's it's easy to say, yes. oh, yeah, everybody wants that guy. I'm just going to go along with it and because there's no risk. You're, everybody wanted him. Why? Why would I say I don't want him? Because everybody wanted him. Now, if everyone's wrong, I, I can hide in the in the in the in the the herd of zebras, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. The person that's the lone wolf that that will pound the table for something and say, "I think this." Right? If you can do it in the right way, don't burn the place down when you do it. Right? But if you can argue your point for something that's outside the realm, if you can be that lone wolf voice for something, Brad's listening. And I think that's really, really important because that really empowers the organization and the people around him. And it shows that trust in the people around him. He talked about him and Brad or him and Dan being the lone wolves last year on, on a, on a player that they got that they're really happy that they were and they got, they got right. But I, I would bet mm -hmm. that there's play, people in that room that at one point or another have been those lone wolves and made a point and have, have, have brought valuable information and perspective to the process. I love that he does this. I love the authenticity, the lack of arrogance, and the ability yes. to evaluate more broadly than getting locked in on a tra on a rail and and just investing themselves in somebody and and going all in. Really, really smart way to approach this, and I think that's part of why he's been so successful. I mean, we say he's been successful. We to be more representative of reality, why that team has been so successful. The organization yep. as a whole is because yep. they they do follow his lead. I want to read the quote here uh, that really got to me. Um so if I am the lone wolf and so and everybody else is completely different than me, no one really knows what I think that I am listening to everybody and I'm like, "Man, I need to go back and look. I missed something." And I have the confidence and the humility to do that because I have so much respect for the process. It's an art form. The best thing about scouting is you get 20 people, 10 people, however many, looking at the same film in a dark room and you have 10 different opinions. That's what's awesome about it. So when I am the lone wolf and everybody else is the opposite, I am like, man, I need to look back and see if I missed something. If, if you know, <laughs> I, it, it, that's, that's great. That's, that is why... One of the things that, that Brad and Dan talked about early on was that they bonded over their desire to have consensus. Um, they are not dictators. They are going through it. It's not, it's not a democratic process. Like there's a, there's a clear org chart. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they're willing to like, if, if Brian Hudspeth comes to them and it's like, man, I really don't like this player that I know you like Brad. 
Brad is going to listen to him. And he just, he just said, like, he will go back and like, why does Brian not like him? And he'll listen to the reasons why yeah. and consider it. And, you know, maybe it will mold his opinion a little bit. And it, it, it that is how good organizations handle things. Um, I always use the reference of the Ozzie Newsom era Baltimore Ravens when they they're the same way. Like if they, if there's one scout who's like banging the table against someone, Ozzy was humble enough and smart enough to say, maybe I should take his view into consideration instead of like firing him because he doesn't say yes to me. Um, and there are there are organizations that are run that way. Yeah. Well, Bob good. Quinn, he would he would turn around and I mean I've got a quote of him from the room. They're the bullshit. And what did that do for him? Right? I mean nothing. Oh, I He's that gone. Guy so much. <laughs> He's gone. That. Oh, it's good. <laughs> you know, that's 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 how you run a good organization. That's how you run a good company. There's there's lessons to that outside of the football world. And I I love that Brad Holmes said it the way that he did. That you know, I I'm the lead wolf, but that doesn't mean that the pack can't tell yeah. me that I'm making the wrong move. Yeah. And that's that's why we are where we are. We are arguably the best team in the NFC going into the draft we have arguably the best top to bottom roster of any team in the nfc right now and i don't have any doubt in my mind that they're not going to improve upon that they're going to get better players this week what this coming week whether it's two of them by trades or eight of them they're going to get better and that i i trust that so much it's so yeah. nice it's so nice it's so nice not to have to worry like and, and i'll say this straight up there will be a pick or two where I'm like, I don't like that one. I don't yeah. like it. Yeah. But I'm going to reserve judgment on that. Um, uh, I, I, I will share this. As most of you know, I run DraftWire with Kurt Popejoy. He and I have run DraftWire now for a full year. And I have told Kurt under no uncertain terms, I do not do draft grades, period. And Kurt has thankfully um, bitten that bullet because we have to. People read them. People read them all. Uh, you think mock drafts get views? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Draft grades, oh, my God. Like, catnip. And I avoid that um, because I don't like putting myself in that situation because my board is different than their board, and I'm not arrogant enough to think that I know exactly what the Arizona Cardinals were thinking and the Seattle Seahawks were thinking and the Denver Broncos and all the 32 teams. I have a pretty good feel for about eight to ten teams. like. Pretty, really pretty good feel on those teams. The rest of them was like, I'm going to defer to other people who know those teams better, who cover those teams, who work for those teams, and I will seek their opinions. I'm not going to grade them on that because I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what their process was. Um, uh, and I know. I know what. It, I mean, look. If I I know what the Bears are looking for, I know what they're looking at. These nuts. Damn right. Also, I got to say, hey, Donkey <laughs> Kong, uh, Super Bowl or bust. That's right. I already called you out. You weren't here. I already said Super Bowl he, he did. on your behalf. Rewind the show, brother. Also, man, the whole gang showed up. Don Burr is here. Yeah, He's yeah. like, you snuck a show, show in on me. I'm mad. I missed a few minutes. I was on a Chicago site ripping them. Yeah, do your do your duty, <laughs> man. You're here now. It's okay. We got you. <laughs> Glad to see you back, Don. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. All right, let's. Uh, we, anything else? Give my love to the Bears home? bar room guys. I like those guys. They're good dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle them. Um, anything? Uh, kickoff rules. You talked about the impact of that a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. The anchoring. We talked about that. What what he said about anchoring to players. Yeah. And lone wolf opinions. And I think I really that pretty that. much uh, the, the 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 importance of conviction. It's pretty much the 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 short version of the Brad Holmes presser. Other than, um, you know, his key opening statement. I said I was going to use it twice. You better back the fuck up out my face, goddammit. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Don't play with me. <laughs> Sorry. I can't help it. I can't help it, man. Didn't you tell me pre-show you were going to play that twice? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Look for everybody. You I know. I, I fall in love with these drops sometimes. That one is Brad Holmes' quote forever, and, and he he didn't say it. Just for those that are confused, but in my mind, he did, and he will say it every time he has a presser because I love it. I, I just want him. Oh, I 
guy. I love that guy. I love that video. That guy. I, he uh, is Detroit. He is me. I mean, I mean, he is like that kid with his little this little phone shooting the video is like, get the fuck out of my way. It's like, you dumb motherfucker. I loved it. I loved it. It was such a great video. Anyway, okay. That's, that's good. Next topic. Right. Let's get to it. Closing thoughts and ideas ahead of the draft. This doesn't mean we're shutting the show down real quick, but we've got a couple minutes here. We want to spend yeah. talking about, you know, the draft is coming up next week. We've got the show on Thursday. We will go live. Ash and I covering day one of the draft. We'll also have a show covering day two, rounds two and three of the draft like we do every year. Um, it is it is going to be a blast. It's going to be a fun time. It always is. It always is. We have a lot of fun going through the draft. And this is probably the longest we're going to have to have waited for the Lions to make a pick. So that shall be an interesting run. But knowing Brad, anything can happen. He's He's traded up, he's traded down, he's picked, he's picked where he's supposed to, so we'll see yes. what happens. Riz, I want to start by turning this to you, okay? Okay. I want to get, I, you're, you're our draft okay. wire guy, you're our lion's wire guy, you, you you do a lot of these mocks, you think about this a lot, you, you're working, you're stuck on 23. <laughs> Damn. So again, we're crowdsourcing the number 23 pick, it's a second pick of the Minnesota Vikings. Let's see uh, if you've got something for them. Throw it up in the chat. Throw it up in the comments if you're seeing this after the fact. But, Riz, I just want to, as we get into the time here, and we get right up against the wire, the start of the draft, what are some of the things What are some of the things that have evolved in your thinking in the last couple of two weeks? With the Lions, I would say one of the things, and a couple of people in the Slack have pointed this out, and I, I needed the reinforcement on it because I – um, and I know Ash has been big on this. The f- look at the positions that they didn't attack in free agency: offensive line, safety, uh, wide receiver. For the most part, I, I I I will acknowledge I completely forgot they signed Traquan Smith. I had no idea that they. I'm looking at the roster that I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. <laughs> okay, um, he's got a shot. He'll compete. Um, he's at least got as much of a shot as Tom Kennedy does, but those are the positions that I think they're going to draft early. Uh, I think so, and I don't know what order, but the way I am very confident that they have spent a tremendous amount of time scouting offensive line, uh, both tackles and guards. That should be no surprise to anyone, but if you need to hear it from somebody who actually like has talked to scouts at pro days and coaches at pro days, they have. <laughs> doesn't I? But doesn't mean I don't know. I don't know when they're going to pick them. It could be twenty nine. It could be sixty one. It could be seventy three. It could be two of those. It could be two picks in between those if they trade back. It could be moving way up to get one specific guy. I don't think they're doing that. Can't rule it out. Don't know. And and that leads me to the larger point. I don't know who they're taking a 29. I do. I have a pretty good idea of a group of players that they like. And I put the video out last week, the eight players that I think are the most likely. I will stand by that, but I don't know which one they're going to take. Like, if you think you do, God bless you, man. God bless me. Yep. (laughs) Who, Who do you think they're taking, Chris? It's, it's, it's more one. It's more, you know, you know who it is. I've, I've been on this, you know how I get locked in. Like, so yes, he talked with Brad Holmes talked about not getting anchored. I am so freaking anchored. I'm hanging on at the bottom of the Marianas trench and I'm not letting go. (laughs) I'm like that sub that went to the the freaking Titanic and got imploded. That's where I am. I'm so hard on this pick, man. I I just watched a documentary (laughs) about that. That was great. It's on Netflix. It's worth watching. I, I cannot, and I know people disagree. I just think that this is, I love Frank right now. I, I, I love this player. I live, yes, love what he brings to this team. And if you don't, you're, you're a sick individual and twisted. Um, I, the, the success of this offense rides on the success of that offensive line. And what Hank, have an the appropriate tank, animal for you. <laughs> <laughs> what Hank and his tanks have been able to do there has been nothing short of fantastic with all the guys that have been out and hurt and everything else. I know Frank Ragnow is going to miss games this year. I know it. 
I know he is. And I, he and and when he does, he is literally barely alive. He's he's got an IV, he's got adrenaline pumps, he's on oxygen. They're probably putting bionic legs on his body at that point just to keep him alive. He's in an iron lung probably. Is the only way you're going to keep him off the field. My man is is not missing games, but he does. And he does. And you need somebody who can play center. And Graham is good, but if Graham goes to center, you're hurting a guard. You're immediately hurting a guard. Jackson oh, Powers Johnson is your guard this year. He comes in, he plays guard, and he's your backup center. And next year, which is when I think Frank's going to retire because we're going to have the Super Bowl and he's going to be happy, happily off into the sunset and go fishing. Grizzly man outdoors time. You've got your next Frank rag now on the line ready to go. I, I genuinely believe that JPJ is that guy. I think you've got an embarrassment of riches for the next couple of years. Him, Panay, you know you're going to have to replace Decker soon. Like, you have to start with some of these guys now to keep that quality of that line there. And I just see him as such a strong move that gives you so much flexibility and quality across that line to keep your strength there. And I say that knowing how great Brad Holmes is drafting later for those skill position players. I just think that this kind of quality and an offensive line, this point in the draft is, is, uh, is just something you can't turn away from. So that's, that's my conviction. I know, I know people don't right. like it. I know people disagree with it, but I I'm, I'm very convicted on that again, because I think Brad can get your skill guys later. And I don't think you have a real glaring hole for those positions. I, I, I think this is a long-term answer for the team. When Frank Ragnow was picked, I, I mean, he was a great player, but I don't think people were ringing bells and jumping up and down and all excited. If you were to go back to that draft, knowing what you know today, people would have been throwing a freaking ticker tape parade out, 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 you know, down Woodward for, 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 I think it was Quinn. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, I, yeah, it really would have been something, something nice. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of those things that's not sexy, but damn damn important. So I'll stop there. That's 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 my thing. That's my thing. And I know you you have some some disagreement with some of the things about him and some questions about him. I just uh, think, I know. worry. Um, I I think he's a great talent. I do actually, and this was pointed out to me by a, a, a NFL scout that I talked to not long ago. He's actually not all that good at snapping the football. His better position is guard. Um, in the NFL's eyes. And that could be one of the reasons why he's sliding is because everybody is or perceived to be sliding mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everybody looks at him as a center. Um, he's probably a better guard prospect. And if you go back and you watch, the, there was the Oregon State game. Um, there was the, I want to say it was Utah, where he had like game-killing errant snaps. And again, not every player is perfect. I love the guy. Um, I would be very happy to have him. Uh, and, and that's the year at guard. I think the the the, the yeah. year at NFL practice is going to fix yeah. those that's those what, kind of issues. Yeah, like yeah. He, remember, this is a guy who was a guard. Now he did play some center in high school. He told us that down in Mobile. Yep. But yeah, it's you. I, I, you can't go wrong by taking him. Um, you can't go wrong by taking. Um, I love Jordan Morgan, another guy that we interviewed down there, and I think that the Lions yeah. are pretty fond of him too, as a guy who can play tackle or guard. Yeah, that is, to me, that is the biggest need for the offense right now is your backup tackle, and if the guy can also play backup guard yeah. at a much higher level than Colby Sorstel or or Coyote Ashika can, you have hit a home run with your first round pick. I I like Jordan Morgan a lot. Um, he played really well coming off of an ACL um, that showed me that he's got athleticism to spare. Now, yes, he does have an ACL. Yes, it did concern me. But I, Chris, the way he looked at me when he shook my hand, like, I know it, I know it's stupid, but like. That's the only twinkle I got. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there was just so, like, he's a Dan Campbell guy. Yeah. He's a Brad Holmes guy. He is a Hank Fraley guy. Yep. That's pretty clear. So he he's one that I would consider like you know again, I, I I did the video, the solo video of the five guys that I don't want them to take. 
Yeah, that's um, a good most video, prominent right? amongst them for the purposes of our conversation, Chop Robinson and Ennis Rakestraw. I don't want anything to do with either of them at twenty nine. Yep. Now, if you're if you're sitting at sixty one and Ennis Rakestraw still on the board, and he could be, then I don't have a problem with it because that's the right spot for him. But uh, I would I would take his teammate Chris Abrams drain over him. That's there just me though. But yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't I don't have any like super convictions like absolutely no way in the world can they draft this player or oh they're absolutely going to take this guy. A lot of people are like that with Darius Robinson, and you're going to see him as the most mocked person to the Lions in final mock drafts. I, a I'm not sold that he's going to get past the Rams. I think the Rams are pretty interested in him as well for obvious reasons. Yep. Like they, where do we where where does our decision makers come from? Agnew and Holmes came from the Rams. It stands to reason that Les Snead, the guy who trained them, would have the same sort of mindset and had the same sort of players appeal to him. And they have a glaring need for it, too. So More Snead. See yeah. feed. Um, yeah. He but, formerly uh, chucks. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be happy with it. I am going to um, – I will not be able to do a live video next week that you'll have to do that with someone else, but I will do another video with, like, last-minute thoughts um, and the players that I do think that they're zeroing in on the most for that. Awesome. Um, yeah. By the way, lots of stuff coming from Ash with Draft Miss. It's the last of the week of Draft Miss. He yes. does some really great videos there. Look for those. Those are coming. First video was today, and it was a good one. Yeah, um, he's... And he spent 20 minutes talking about, like, setting it up. He, I'm not sure he actually mentioned any players in it, but it was a really good setup for, for what was going on. Yeah, I loved he's, it. He's Love fantastic. You, Ash, Ash is, is fantastic. <laughs> um, so so that's it. Um, is Colby, is Colby Sorsdahl a future starter? So you have, you know, I don't know. I say I don't know either. Here's here's what I want to see, okay? And I haven't been able to see it yet, and nobody else has looked that I can tell. What's Colby look like now? People got all up in my ass about uh, Hutchinson and I, when I said he had that baby fat, right? And that his body was going to change in the year that, with an off season. And then, and, and I, I had the pictures, I compared them on screen after that off season. Yeah. I'll be damned. <laughs> He, yeah. he, his body changed. Um, Colby was exactly the same kind of thing. He had a little bit of baby fat going on. He wasn't the best version of himself. These guys get out of like the, you know, the combine, the draft OTAs football doesn't stop for them until the first off season after they've been a, their first, uh, the first year of an NFL player. That's when they get their first chance to really kind of rest and break down and get kind of into that, that thing. What will tell me about Colby isn't, I'm not concerned about his skill. He's got one of the best coaches in the league, if not the very best, to help him skill up. He's a smart cat. I know they really like him and they Seriously. believe in him. I know Brad Holmes knows what he's getting when he gets a player. This could very well be one of those players that just pops up that people didn't see coming, wasn't on the radar, thought he was a depth guy, and he turns into something. What I want to see is Colby's body. I want to see what Colby looks like right now in these OTAs, and I haven't seen the pictures, and I think that is going to help define what Colby becomes now look he could just turn off come out looking like Mr. Universe and not skill up but I just don't think with this coaching staff that that's a possibility Colby's a dog he's got it in him he's a good kid he works hard he is glued to Hank on the game days if you've seen him he's mm -hmm. out there Hank's putting signals in he's standing right next to him putting signals in all game long every game on the sideline he doesn't leave Hank's side he's got dog in him and I'm I think Colby has every opportunity to be that guy but it depends what he does to his body this offseason that's that's what i think is gonna is gonna yeah. be the, the defining piece for him no yeah. and he he's he, i and remember this is a guy who's making a position change he'd been a tackle all his life they're training him at guard yep. um so there's there's a learning curve on that coming from the fcs level too but yep. uh again we've talked about it a few times his book is not written yet. We are in the first, the second chapter, and there's a lot more to go on that. So yeah. uh, one of the things that I do appreciate about this organization is they are open to like growth and open to like having their opinions about a player that they've taken change for the better and for the worse. And I think this is a big offseason for Colby Source. So if he can't at least prove that he's the top interior reserve um, I think he needs to be out, beat out Kode Aoshika, quite frankly. Yeah. Otherwise, I think it's going to be a disappointment. Yeah, because um, oh, he should. Yeah, nothing against no, nothing against Yoda because that guy that guy's busted his ass. But I, w I want somebody better than that. And if Colby Sorosol is better than that, that's great. Yep. Make it happen. 
All right. I want to I want to get you Riz final thoughts, okay? Ahead of the yes. draft. It's it's just you and I sitting here with a with a drink and a, a, a nice warm fire. Um you're you're kind of puffing on the pipe. You got your slippers, the the, the little smoking jacket, right? And you want to wax poetic about your thoughts ahead of this draft. Where are you at? Oh man, I could use a smoking jacket even though I don't, I've never smoked like ever. <laughs> it's it's a it's a bubble pipe. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, I would just say I'm, I am at peace, not knowing what's going to happen with the lions and not worrying about what's going to like, like in the, in the Brad Holmes era had a very, 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 very sure idea that they were taking Aiden Hutchinson if he wasn't the number one pick, of course. Mm Mm-hmm had a pretty good idea of who they liked going into last year's draft. And that was proven correct by who they drafted. Um, I, I, I feel good. Like I, I'm enjoying or trying my best to enjoy it. Do, does I, I will admit it doesn't happen all the time, but I enjoy the process of being surprised as much as fans do. And because I don't get that all the time and I'm relishing that this year and I enjoy it. I have not pre-written the Detroit Lions draft any single person yet. Um, last year, I had I had done three or four by this. So at this, remember at this point last year is when JMO and the gambling suspensions happened, and that sort of like threw a monkey wrench in everything too for draft prep. Let's pray that none of that happens this year. Um, I don't think that will. But yeah, I, I I feel really like at ease with the draft. And not knowing what's going to happen, I I have a pretty good. I know that the Bears are taking Caleb Williams number one. I have a pretty good idea that the Commanders are taking Jaden Daniels at number two. After that, I don't know. I have pretty strong convictions about a few spots, but I don't know, and I kind of like that. Chris, yeah. Yeah. it's weird because I normally don't. I like to know. I don't know when I I I know what I don't know when I like it. You Does come, that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Here's here's it feels good. M- my kind of closing thought on this, and I, I put it in the in the chat on the YouTube here, um, and I'm not going to talk about Quinn because he was just a bumble fucking idiot. But Mayhew, he took wild swings that sometimes hit. Holmes makes educated choices that rarely miss, and that's really the difference between where we're at. And that's why, look, I know who I love, but I know that I I I, I don't know anything as well as Holmes does. I know Holmes is the guy, and if Holmes tells me I'm the guy, that Holmes is my lone wolf, I'm just shutting up and listening, right? I, that's that. That's the end of the story because he's 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 the smartest dog in the room on this one, and him and the team are the very very best. So I I can't get angry. I can't. I can I can be mad at at, at Quinn because he 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 proved that he's worthy of it. Holmes has never proved being worthy of, of anything but trust. So I'll let him make these educated choices and rarely miss until he starts missing. Right. And then I'll say, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with the process. But even then, everybody's going to miss a year. I'm going to miss one here and there. His hit rate. I, I We've got to do a study on this in the in the dead time, Riz, and see what his hit rate has been compared to other uh, uh, GMs in the same time. Because I just my gut is that his is much higher than the rest of the GMs in the league. I would agree. And yeah. we we do do those sorts of things at DraftWire, so we will be looking at. That. Let's get let's get a uh, Pope Joy on here. I would love to do that. Let's that do that. Fun. Let's do that. I think that would be something really really smart. And, and maybe we, as you guys are put one of those out, we can talk. It's about interesting it. because he's a Steelers guy, and the Steelers have been a very good. Or they haven't had a losing season in how long? How long has Mike Tomlin been there? Like yeah. they're the model of consistency. Their roster this past year had no business finishing with a winning record. So it'd it'd be fun to talk to him about that and like compare and contrast things like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do that because I think he's, he's, he's a good cat. He's a smart guy too. And let's face it, him around. You're still not the brightest guy in the room. All right. With a little call back there with that, we're going to call it a show and Riz appreciate you, man. Thanks for taking the shit. Uh, <laughs> remember, don't forget about us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. It's his busy time. He's not on top of everything on these kind of tete-a-tete. This is my chance to take advantage of him. And look, 
When you get a chance to take care, <laughs> take advantage of the Riz, you're going to take every second you can get. Uh, don't forget to press the Patreon, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Get access to the Slack chat if you join for as little as $5 a month or more. Um, great, great football talk. Great access to Riz and myself and Ash and the whole crew, Bish Brown, uh, uh, Dr. Liao is there, who's put together a great video this week, as a matter of fact. Um, it's good. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. Good stuff. Get in there. Um, it's it's one of the give backs you get. You also get uh, ahead of time information and you get access to, you know, other other little special things that we do along the way that we don't always publicize. So uh, patreon.com slash Detroit Lions podcast. Five dollars a month gets you into the slack. Uh, but if you want to give less, you can. It's a great way to support the show. And we appreciate everybody yep. that does that. Do. Um, also, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeff Risden, also known as Giuseppe Rizdoni. Inside joke and at DET Lions Podcast, DET Lions Podcast. Uh, that's where you find out all the info about the show, when we're going to go, when we're not going to go, what's going on, and when. Uh, also, be sure to follow us on or go to Detroit Lions Podcast.com and subscribe to the podcast because when you do that, the glory, the glory hole happens with Riz. What happens, Riz? <laughs> Over so there, I get to come in your ears automatically, <laughs> and you don't even you, you think it's him. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna see you next time on the Detroit Lions podcast. Remember, no pants, no toasters, no hot tubs, no glory holes, and no problems because we are your Detroit Lions and Reddit connection. Thank you all. A lot more shows coming. The, the yeah. barriers to production Good. have gone away. Thanks, folks. See you. <laughs>